Good afternoon, everyone. We'd like to welcome you and thank you for joining our webinar, Answers to Your Top Labor Law Posting Compliance Questions in 2017. A quick note before we get started, please feel free to submit questions at any time during the presentation using the chat feature on your screen. We will respond immediately to any technical concerns, and we will try to answer as many questions as we can about the material presented via follow-up emails after the presentation. And without further ado, here is Ashley Kaplan, our in-house senior employment law attorney. Ashley has been practicing labor and employment law for more than 20 years, representing employers in a variety of matters, discrimination and harassment litigation, to defending FLSA class action lawsuits. Here at PosterGuard, Ashley handles our legal compliance and also oversees the teams responsible for researching all the posting laws and developing compliance solutions to meet our customers' diverse needs. As a special offer to our attendees today, Ashley will be available to set up a complimentary personal consultation about your specific posting compliance needs. If you're interested, please indicate that in the question box and we will contact you to set it up. Now, here's our presenter, Ashley Kaplan. Thank you, and welcome everyone. Today's webinar is a little different from the ones we usually do on posting compliance. So usually we take one topic at a time, you know, one aspect of posting compliance, like federal contractor posting requirements, um, just for example. And we have a, a webinar series where we do about one topic a month. And for each of these webinars, we always open it up for questions from the audience, um, from our attendees, which we try to follow up with after the webinars. And over time, um, over the past year, We've gotten some really great questions from the attendees. And we've noticed that a lot of the same questions keep popping up over and over again. Uh, there are a lot of repeats and patterns around the same issues. So from this, we know what's important to you, what you find confusing, and what areas you want more information on. So today, we're going to cover the most common questions we've gotten from our webinar series over the past several months. Um, everything from issues on foreign language postings to remote worker posting obligations um, to issues like posting on a contractor's property. We're actually going to get into some more advanced topics than we usually do. And as I go through the questions, I'll give you the answers and I'll try to fill you in on all the background that you need to understand each issue. Um, you know, I'll give you the context you need, so hopefully you can apply it to your workplace. And we're going to cover about 15 common questions, so hopefully you'll walk away with some good information, even if every question doesn't apply to you. I did try to pick some of the more generic ones, but again, as I said, it, it does get a little more advanced, especially toward the end. Okay, so let's jump right in with the FAQs. Um, and I've tried to put these in a logical order to cover the basics first before we get into the specifics. So the first question is, do we have to post labor law posters even if we only have a few employees at a location? And the answer is yes. So each poster that is required has a different underlying law and different requirements for who it applies to. But most of the posters that are required, most of them do apply to all employers, even if you only have one employee. So depending on what state you're in, there are up to 21 postings that you have to display. And that's just for your basic federal and state compliance. Um, there are a few out there that only apply if you have at least 15 employees. There are some posters with minimum employee thresholds. Um, there's a federal, one of the federal postings, which I'm going to go over, that um, only applies if you have 50 or more employees company-wide. That's the uh, family and medical leave poster. But other than that, almost all of the posters apply to employers as long as you have at least one employee on your payroll. And whenever there is a minimum employee threshold, whenever there are laws that um, say, you know, it only applies if you have 15 or more or, or 20 or more, um, it's, it's not about how many employees you have at that certain location. The law is usually worded, it's usually based on how many employees you have company-wide. So um, you need to look at how many employees you have in your company, not just how many you have working at a specific location. So while we're on the basics, here's the list of federal posters that are required, and there are six. Um, this is just a brief overview of the federal posting requirements. 
First, there's the posting issued by the EEOC, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. And this one covers anti-discrimination provisions and protected characteristics under federal law. Um, this poster actually covers more than one law. So even though the major federal discrimination laws, um, especially Title VII and the ADA, even though those laws apply only if you have 15 or more employees, there are other provisions on this poster that apply to smaller employers, like certain federal contractors, even if you only have one employee. So you can't just say this, this poster is only required if you have 15 or more employees. Um, next is the OSHA posting, and this one highlights important provisions of the Occupational Safety and Health Act, and there is no minimum employee requirement uh, or size for this poster. Next on the list is the FMLA, the one I mentioned, the Family and Medical Leave Act posting, and um, this one gives employees basic information about their eligibility for leave, what benefits they can expect, and also your responsibilities as the employer regarding FMLA leave um, and procedures. And this is the one um, that applies if you have 50 or more employees company-wide. So again, for the posting requirement, for this FMLA posting requirement, you're looking at how many employees you have company-wide, not just at a location. The number of employees at the location only matters when we're talking about the FMLA once you start talking about employee eligibility. A lot of people are confused about this. Um, that's when you look at whether there are 50 employees within a 75-mile radius. But for the posting requirement, you have to post if there are 50 or more employees company-wide. Um, then we have USERA, which stands for the Uniform Services Employment and Reemployment Rights Act. And this notice covers reemployment after military leave, anti-discrimination provisions, um, and issues around health insurance. And this one also applies no matter how small your business is or how many employees you have. Um, applies to everyone. Next is the FLSA, the Fair Labor Standards Act posting. And um, this one notifies employees about the federal minimum wage rate, overtime rules, and also child labor laws. And this poster also applies even if you just have one covered employee. And then finally there's the EPPA poster that stands for the Employee Polygraph Protection Act. And um, this one lets employees know the rules around lie detector tests in employment. Um, this poster, by the way, is mandatory even if you don't use lie detector tests. Um, that's a question I get a lot, so I wanted to just mention that up front. And this poster applies no matter how many employees you have. So those are the federal posting requirements. And then on a state level, there are additional mandatory postings that are required for every business. Um, like I said, depending on what state you're in, this can add up to 15 additional posters. That's where we get to um, 21 posters, depending on your state. There are six federal plus up to 15 state posters. And the state posters cover topics like minimum wage rates, um, you know, the state law minimum wage rates, fair employment, unemployment insurance, workers' comp, um, also rules around smoking in the workplace, employee no smoking postings, paid sick leave, child labor, and then some newer areas we're seeing like human trafficking, expanded family care rights, and even um, electronic cigarettes in the workplace. And most of the state posters also apply to all employers um, as long as you have one or more employee on payroll. So then on top of this, um, you might have additional posting obligations if you're in certain cities or counties with their own posting requirements. And this is an area where we've really seen a lot of growth, uh, growth over the past couple of years. And I'm going to talk about this more in a moment, but for now I just wanted to mention them because these um, city and county posters because they are also posters that typically apply to employers of all sizes, including small employers with only a few employees on payroll. Okay, this next FAQ is a question we get all the time, so I thought we could go ahead and get it out of the way at the beginning. Can't we get all of these posters for free from the government websites? Um, a lot of people ask this because they're thinking about using a poster service versus handling posting compliance on their own um, internally by just going straight to the government websites. And the answer is yes, sort of. So yes, you can download most of these posters for free from the government websites. But once you take into account the time, the labor, and the know-how required to get it right and keep it right, you'll see that it's really not free at all. It takes resources. So um, in large companies I've worked with, um, some of my larger clients, 
where they have multiple locations and different jurisdictions with different posting laws, this can literally become someone's full-time job um, to get it right. And, um, and here's why. So first of all, there's not a one-stop shop for these posters from the government. You have to go to multiple websites just to get your basic federal and state posters, just to get started. And you have to know what agencies to contact and what posters you're looking for. It's not always just a matter of looking up your state's Department of Labor. Um, that might get you one or two of the required posters. There's not a central place or, a, you know, or one website where you can get all the posters you need. There's actually, across the country right now, there are about 175 different agencies that are responsible for issuing their own posters. Um, and that's just federal and state. And right now there are about 370 different mandatory posters um, on, when you combine the federal and state um, postings that are required. Um, and of course that doesn't take into account any of the additional posters, like the local posters, city and county posters, or any industry variations. I'm just talking about your basic federal and state posters. So in any given state, just managing posting compliance in one single state, an employer would have to go to up to nine different agencies to get their required posters for federal and state law. And then on top of that, there are also about 22,000 cities and counties, each with their own governing agencies and ordinances to monitor. To monitor. Um, so there are several per city and county. Um, luckily, not all of them have posting requirements, but a lot of them do. And like I said, we're seeing that number grow every day. So um, the problem is that none of these agencies, whether it's federal, state, or local, the agencies don't have work share agreements um, where you know, they provide all the posters that the sister agencies require. Um, there are some cases, there are a couple agencies that do a pretty good job and they try to you know, have some crossover where you know, one agency will have posters that are issued or enforced by another agency, but it's not a complete list. And uh, there's not a one-stop shop where you can get all the federal, all the state, um, you know, everything you need for full compliance, and certainly not when um, the city and county postings. The local agencies really operate on their own. Um, they operate independently apart from the state and federal agencies. There's no crossover there. So this chart just shows at a glance how many different posters are required in each state. And again, this is just your federal and state postings for now. Um, the total number of Fed and state posters, state by state, is listed in the left column. And then in the right-hand column, it shows how many different agencies are responsible for issuing those posters. That's how many agencies or how many different websites you have to go to in each state just to get your basic federal and state posters you need for compliance. And of course, like I said, these numbers are much higher when you include city and county posters, industry-specific posters, um, and also federal contractor posters. All of those come from different agencies that aren't even represented um, on this chart. So let's say you invest the time and the resources and you download all the required posters for your locations under federal, um, state, and local law. The next thing you have to do to get it right is some legal research. Um, for example, you need to know if any of the posters have size, font, or color requirements. And every poster has its own posting regulations, even within the same state. You know, they're all over the place. So um, you also need to know from, you know, a lot of times it takes research to determine if the posters are mandatory or just recommended. Um, then you need to know if they are industry specific, if they're the right posters for your industry. Um, next, you would need to research if there are any foreign language posting requirements. Um, and we're going to talk about this later in the presentation, but a lot of posters have to be displayed in multiple languages, even if all of your employees are proficient in English. And a lot of times that takes research. Um, and these are just um, some of the reasons that businesses outsource to a poster provider. There's a lot more to it than just going to a government website and printing out the posters. So, okay, let's say you've downloaded all the right posters, um, you've done your research, and then you have to worry about the posters changing. And um, I think that's a good segue for um, another common question that we get. Um, the question is, is it okay to update our posters just once a year? And the simple answer, this one is simple, um, the answer is no. This is actually a big no-no, but a lot of companies still operate this way. Um, and I can understand why. Um, but, you know, labor law posting requirements change all the time, not just once a year. Um, there are a lot of states where the state minimum wage rates increase once a year. 
And in some states, it's always in January. So that's why it makes sense to me why a lot of people think that way. So, um, you know, you would only need to update your posters in January um, when we talk about those states and those minimum wage posters. Um, but that's only some of the posters in some of the states. However, if you're only updating your posters for that minimum wage change, you're likely to be out of compliance throughout the year when the other posters are changing. So uh, they're not on the same schedule or cycle. Um, also, be careful because a lot of minimum wage increases go into effect at different times of the year. It's not always in January. So you, you need to watch for that too. And then when it comes to all the other laws reflected in the posters beyond minimum wage, these laws are changing all the time whether it's new laws being passed, um, amendments that change existing laws, or even laws getting repealed that change your posting requirements. All of these affect what posters you need and when you need to display them. And the effective dates for displaying mandatory updates can be any time of the year. They change sporadically and often without notice, and it happens all year round. Um, also, poster changes are actually on the rise, the rate of change. So here at ComplyRight, one of my roles is to oversee the legal team that researches and monitors all the posting laws for Poster Guard customers. And on average, our legal team sees about 150 state law posting changes a year. That's an average. And every time there's a posting change, the legal team reviews the underlying laws and uh, makes the determination if it's a mandatory change or a non-mandatory update. And at least half of these state law changes do require a mandatory update or an immediate replacement of the posters. Um, and then on a local level, sometimes we get two or three mandatory changes in a week. It, it really just depends, but you know, they come in um, pretty quick. We do see more changes near the end of the year when, like I said, a lot of states and also cities raise their minimum wages, but the poster changes happen all year long, and this is something we, we track and measure. Um, and year over year, we've seen the number of mandatory changes increase. The total number of mandatory um, changes per year has also increased. So in fact, this year, it, um, it's already been a record year, one that we've never seen before. And we expect that number to continue to rise as more and more states and local governments are stepping up to pass their own employment laws. Um, that's a trend that we've really been watching for the past couple of years, and it's expected to continue. Um, based on the legislation that's currently pending, based on what's out there right now on a state and local level, we expect to see states and cities continue to pass their own laws on everything from minimum wage rates to paid sick time, um, and even some new areas that are gaining momentum on a local level, like ban the box laws. Um, those are the laws that prohibit you from asking um, certain criminal um, background questions um, in the pre-employment stage. Um, and we're also seeing um, new, other new trends emerge, like the laws prohibiting you from asking applicants about salary history. And all of these new laws potentially come with new posting requirements or poster updates. Um, by the way, the most poster changes I've seen in one state in a single year was 14 changes. And that's obviously on the high end, um, but it's really unpredictable. Some years you may only have two or three changes at a single location. So the bottom line is if you're only updating your posters once a year, you may be okay with your state minimum wage poster, but you're at risk of being out of compliance when it comes to all the other postings. And um, remember, the state minimum wage is only one of many um, postings that you have to stay on top of. Um, another problem, just by the way, um, that adds to the complexity of posting compliance, especially if you're doing it on your own, um, just something to keep in mind, is that the government agencies don't notify businesses when these posting changes occur. So um, you would have to have a system in place to go out and you know, check the, the posters for changes. And this can be difficult because you have to actively monitor the posters and the employment laws for changes. And it's not always obvious when there are changes, even on the government websites. Um, a lot of times the posting requirements and the notice of change, um, the fact that it's been updated, that can be buried on different agency website pages. And um, we find a lot that the old posters remain up on active website links um, with no information, even though they're non-compliant. They don't redirect you to the new poster all the time. So um, you know, sometimes these posting guidelines, um, it's not even on the website pages. They can be buried in statutes, regulations, case law. Um, so you have to go beyond the, the website pages a lot of times. 
So it can be difficult to find the right mandatory posters in the first place, to know when they change, and then to interpret whether the updates are mandatory or just cosmetic. Um, and then it's even hard sometimes to find out the compliance deadlines. Uh, this is crazy, and I get a lot of questions around this. The compliance deadlines for the posters don't always correspond with the date of the new law. For example, a law may go into effect January 1, but the poster might have to be posted months ahead of time. Or in some cases, the law goes into effect, but the poster isn't released by the agency until weeks or even months after the law goes into effect. And then some laws are passed, and there's no posting requirement at all. Um, for example, some states have their own minimum wage rate, but no poster is required to let employees know about it. So it's really all over the place. So those are some of the reasons that doing it on your own isn't exactly free, um, and also why if you're choosing to work with a poster provider, you want to make sure you choose one with a dedicated legal team, um, and also a service that covers all the poster updates for you automatically throughout the year because of all these changes. Okay, next I'm going to go ahead and cover the topic of city and county posters. And the question we get the most on this goes something like this. If we have a prevailing city minimum wage with a mandatory poster, do we still have to post the federal and state minimum wage posters if those rates are different? And the simple answer is yes. A lot of cities and counties have their own minimum wage rates, and, um, which is different from their state's minimum wage. And then there's also the federal minimum wage rate, of course. So the way it works is that states have authority to pass laws that are more generous to employees than under federal law. So a lot of states have higher minimum wage rates than under federal law. Then cities and counties generally have authority to pass laws that are even more generous to employees. So a lot of times you'll see a city or county with an even higher minimum wage rate than under state law. Whenever you have federal, state, and local laws that conflict, you have to follow, as the employer, you have to follow the law that is the most beneficial to your employees, which um, would be the highest minimum wage rate, for example, or the most generous family and medical leave provisions if it, there's a conflict with your fed, state, and local um, family medical leave laws. However, when it comes to the posters, you still have to post all of the versions. You have to post the federal, state, and the city versions of the posters, even if the information on the posters um, conflict. So you follow the law that is most generous to your employees, but you have to post all of the posters for compliance with Fed, state, and local posting requirements. Um, as I mentioned, cities and counties have started requiring a lot of posters, and it's not just for minimum wage. Um, these posters cover things like local paid sick time, local family and medical leave laws, discrimination laws, which are um, you know, uh, more expanded than under state law, and a lot of other areas um, similar to the state posters, but just usually with broader pr um, protections. And I just want to clarify, not every city and county has posting requirements, but a lot of them do. And like I said, this is the area where we're seeing the most growth right now. So it's really important to stay on top of this for your locations, even if you don't have a mandatory posting requirement today in your city or county. Um, we're seeing a lot of brand new ones coming out. Um, this slide shows this is a list of some of the major cities and counties with labor law posting requirements right now. It's not a complete list, but we've tried to include some of the bigger cities um, and counties with some of the more recent posting changes on here, so some of the newer laws. And by the way, if you are a Post Regard customer, there's nothing that you need to worry about with um, these local posters. We automatically cover you um, based on your location's zip code. So if your location has a city or county posting requirement, we're already sending you those posters with your federal and state poster sets. Um, in fact, we expanded last year, and we now cover every single local jurisdiction in the U.S. Um, we cover every city and county. Um, so once you're on Poster Guard on the service, we'll send you new posters whenever there are legal updates or changes to the posters. Um, and also whenever there's a new law that comes out that requires a poster for the first time. Um, it's all included and sent automatically, Fed, state, and local, so you don't need to call and ask for them. Um, just make sure that we have your correct um, address for your locations in our files, and then everything um, will work from there. Okay, one of the most common questions we get goes something like this. 
Is it sufficient to post the posters in one location at our facility, or do we have to display in multiple locations in the same building? Um, actually, this might be the most common question I get on a daily basis. And it comes in many forms, but basically the question is, where should we post and how many poster sets do we need? And um, the answer to this one is, it depends. So all of the posting statutes have their own specific language about where to post. But the general rule when you, you know, wrap them all up together is basically that the posters have to be displayed in prominent and conspicuous locations throughout your business where they are accessible to all employees. And accessible to all employees means they need to be posted in areas that are frequented by employees and frequented by all of their employees. You can't leave any groups out or any departments out. So in a small office, you may be able to satisfy this requirement by just posting in one location, like in an employee break room, if you know that all your employees have access to it and use it regularly. Or if you only have one employee entrance and all employees have to use the same entrance to come and go. Or if there's just, maybe there's just one hallway leading to the employee restrooms, you'd be okay just posting it there. But for most companies, you're probably going to need more than one posting display site to make sure that all your employees have regular access to the posters. Um, the number of posting displays or posting display sites that you'll have in each facility really comes down to, it really just depends on the logistics um, and how accessible the posters are to your employees, how you're you know, arranged. Um, but to ensure compliance, look for, um, you should look for the, the areas that are you know, highly visible or high traffic areas that are accessible to all your employees. Like in a large facility, um, this could mean posting near each employee entrance. Um, also, the employee break room, uh, you know, or if you have multiple ones, or an employee locker room if you have that. Um, if you have an HR department, you may want to post um, near the HR offices. That's always a good idea. Another idea, um, again, this just depends on your organization. Another idea is to hang them near time clock stations if you have a lot of employees physically punching a time clock. And then you also have to be aware of applicant area posting requirements, which I'll cover um, today as well. I'm going to go over that. So it really just depends on the layout of your facility. Um, unfortunately, there's not a magic number or formula provided by the regulations or the agencies. Um, it, it really just depends on, on how your, what, you know, the logistics of your facility and how your employees interact and what areas they use. I've had some clients in high-rise buildings with multiple, you know, levels and elevators who have needed to post on every single floor because there isn't a main entrance that all employees share. They can come in in multiple different ways. Other clients in facilities with multi-levels like that have gotten away with posting only in one spot on the ground floor because all of their employees use the same entrance to get to the stairs or the elevators. Um, another example, if you have two or more buildings on your um, campus and not all employees frequent every building on a regular basis. Maybe they sort of stay within their own. There are a lot of employees that just work within you know, one building on your campus. Then you would need to post in each building. So it's really specific to your facility, but you need to think of all your employees and make sure you have the posters in areas where they will access them frequently in the regular course of business. Okay, the next question we get a lot is, the posters take up too much room on our walls. Can we post electronically on our company intranet site instead? So before I get into some of the nuances around posting electronically, let me just answer this by keeping it um, as simple as possible. The short answer is no. If your facility has walls, the posters have to be posted on the walls with some very limited exceptions that I'll explain. So let's talk um, a little bit about posting electronically. Um, this is something that we watch really closely. Our legal team has been in contact with the government agencies, and we're constantly reading all the agency announcements and posting guidelines and regulations for every poster as they come out. This is something we've been on top of for years and actually um, expected as a business that electronic posting and touch screen monitors would be legal by now uh, or would be approved as a compliant solution. But unfortunately, the government agencies, when it comes to posting compliance, haven't really caught up with the modern technology of today's workforce. And the fact that the posters are all issued by different agencies with different laws behind them 
um, that's also part of the problem. Um, you know, every, the, the agencies aren't all on the same page with this issue. A few agencies have addressed electronic posting and allow for it with certain restrictions, but the majority still require the wall postings. So for now, the general rule is still that electronic delivery is not a substitute for full-size physical posters on the walls, even if wall space is tight, which we understand. Um, the posters still have to be posted in conspicuous locations, accessible to all employees in physical format and posted on your walls. And then, like I said, a lot of these have you know, size and font requirements, so um, you have to be real careful um, in terms of shrinking them and trying to make them too small. You just can't do that. Um, there are, when it comes to electronic postings, there are a couple of exceptions. And these are some of the more recent developments. Um, we're seeing as new regulations come out under federal law, the government agencies are starting to address this one by one. Um, we've seen it with the most recent FMLA regulations with the last FMLA update, um, poster update, and also when the USERA um, notice became a requirement. Um, also, there, um, it's the case with a couple of federal contractor posters, and then on a state level, really just only a few um, state posters out there where the government has said it's okay to communicate these posters electronically. But you can only do it, in, in the case of all of these, if you communicate all your other employee policies electronically, and you have to make sure that your employees have electronic access and regularly work with computers for their jobs to make sure they have easy access to the electronic posters. And that can be really difficult to stay on top of for a lot of businesses because, um, you know, first of all, it depends that you have to provide all your employees with electronic access. And then it's also tough because only a couple of the posters can be communicated electronically and all the other posters still have to be posted up on the walls. So um, for most businesses that I work with, it really doesn't make sense to worry about implementing two separate solutions. So that's why most employers just um, rely on the wall posters for everything, even though you could do a couple of the posters electronically instead. So um, the agencies are actually pretty strict about this. Even though the posters take up a lot of room, um, if you have walls, you're supposed to make room for the posters. Um, now, there are some exceptions for non-traditional work sites without walls, which, which we're going to get into in a moment, and there are exceptions for employees who work remotely, like from their homes or out in the field. And that leads to the next question that we're going to cover. Um, so this next question is still something a lot of people are confused about. Is it true that we have to provide the posters for our employees who work from home? And the short answer is yes. So um, for years, the Poster Guard legal team has gotten questions from customers and businesses saying they have employees who work from home, and they wanted to know what they're supposed to do in terms of the posters. Should they be sending the home-based employees full-size laminated posters? And um, a lot of companies do that. We've, we've all kind of laughed trying to imagine someone working from home and putting up these big posters on, in their kitchen or on their bathroom walls. Um, but obviously that wouldn't work for everyone, and that is not required. But it is kind of confusing because by law, you're required to provide the mandatory notices to all of your employees. There's no exception for, you know, based on where they work or how they work. Um, but the regulations don't tell us exactly how that's supposed to be done when it comes to off-site employees. They do tell you they're um, required to communicate the information, but they don't tell you that you have to use a certain solution or format and whether it has to be paper or electronic. Um, but there are some more recent court cases where employers have sent these um, notices and postings electronically to their off-site employees, and the courts have said that is a good alternative, that makes sense, that meets the intent of the law, um, you got the notices to the employees and that's what counts. So electronic postings are a compliant solution for employees who work from home or in the field. But remember, you have to make sure these employees have computers or mobile devices that they use for work and that they regularly communicate with the office via email or the internet for their jobs. Um, that's all part of accessibility. You have to make sure that they're accessible. The next question is related to this, and um, hopefully it'll clear up some confusion on um, this topic. We have remote workers who come into the office a few times a year for team meetings, and they see our posters on the walls when they come in. Is that sufficient, or do we still need to supply the posters electronically? The 
answer is that probably does not suffice. So there's actually some, and I mean the uh, having the wall posters only probably doesn't suffice in this scenario. So there's actually some guidance on this from the federal agencies. And it's not a black and white directive or a law that spells out the specific frequency when we talk about remote workers. But it is a guideline and a really good point of reference to follow. The Department of Labor actually published an FAQ on this. And in that case, the business asked the DOL, if our remote employees come into the office where the posters are displayed three to four times a month, is that enough to satisfy posting compliance? And the DOL said yes. If your employees come into the office and see the posters on the walls three to four times a month, that would be sufficient. However, if it's less frequent than that, you need to consider an alternative way of communicating the posters, such as electronically. So an electronic solution is definitely the best way to meet this obligation, um, probably the easiest for your remote workers who, um, you know, as long as they work with computers. And um, as a best practice, try to look for a solution that pushes out alerts to your remote workers, to these um, home-based employees or, or off-site workers. So that way they're constantly updated when posters change. Um, also, um, ideally, a solution that would track their acknowledgments so you have proof that the employees were, you know, in fact provided with access to the latest postings and that they did indeed view the posters. Um, you can do it other ways. That's not required. Um, you could do it other ways like placing links on your company intranet site, for example. But the key is to make sure the postings are complete and always up to date and that your employees have noticed when they change. And then finally, you know, you need to make sure that you've done everything you can to make your employees aware of posters, you know, how to, how to um, access them and, you know, how to use the link so that they, you know, whether you put it in your handbook or through other training, you need to build awareness um, as to, you know, how to access the posters. And that's, again, talking about your remote and your off-site workers. It's still not a substitute for your actual facilities where employees report into work. The next question is related. What if a remote worker lives in another state? Which state posters do we provide? And this is a great question. Um, it gets a little messy here, but I, I wanted to include it because we get it so often. Um, this actually depends on a lot of factors, including the state laws where you operate, the state laws where the employee works or resides, how your company is structured, um, there are tax issues involved, how you, you're structured in terms of taxing taxes, and also what kinds of policies or agreements you have in place with your employees. And then to make things even more confusing, courts have ruled inconsistently on this issue. Um, they're a little bit all over the place, depending on the state and depending on which employment law is at issue. It's not the same, you know, whether we're talking about wages versus discrimination, for example. So I'm going to have to stay pretty general here, and unfortunately, you'd probably need um, specific legal advice to get a definitive answer for, you know, a specific employee based on all of those factors that I just mentioned. You'd have to go through all those things to get a definitive answer. Um, especially, you know, what state you're in and what state the employee is working in. But as a general rule, when it comes to what laws to follow, most courts say it's the law of the state where the employee physically performs the work, which would be the state where the employee lives if it's someone working from home. However, some courts say both laws apply, the laws of the state where your company is headquartered and the laws of the state where the employee is performing the work. And if there's a conflict in those laws, which usually there, there are conflicts, um, in that, that case you would apply the provisions that are most generous to the employee. So basically, to play it safe, um, employers with employees working out of state should apply the law that gives the greatest benefit to the employee after considering all the applicable laws. Um, the, of course, there's always federal laws the state laws of both your state and where the employee is, and then don't forget the city and county laws that we talked about. They count too. Um, and having a written agreement or written policies that spell these things out can also really help. But when it comes to the posters, back to the posters, as a best practice, because of everything I just went over, if you're providing the posters electronically for remote workers um, out of state who work in a different state, the safest thing to do is go ahead and provide the posters for both locations. Um, under both laws, but at a minimum, 
you need to provide the posters for the state where the employee is actually performing the work, where the employee is stationed or where the employee lives for a home-based employee. Okay, so here's the next question, um, which again comes in many forms, but the gist of the question is, we have workers who work in trucks or kiosks without walls. How do we satisfy posting requirements? And this is actually becoming more common these days, where employees don't really ever report into a facility or a building with walls where they would see your labor law posters. And really, there are a lot of workstations and work sites today that don't have walls or any way to hang up the required posters. Um, we're seeing more and more of this. And um, I'm not just talking about being tight on wall space, like the question we went over earlier. Now I'm talking about work sites without any walls at all. So some good examples of this are mall kiosks, those little kiosks in the middle of, that you see in the middle of the mall. Um, other examples of these kinds of work sites without walls are valet stations, construction checkpoints, um, food trucks, and then um, other mobile service units, um, which we're seeing a lot of today, especially in healthcare. Um, we're seeing a growing number of mobile services like MRI units, mammogram on wheels, uh, kidney dialysis services on wheels, or even on the blood donation trailers. Um, we've also seen this come up with businesses who perform services on another company's property, like janitorial services, for example, where there's just sort of a checkpoint where the employees go to get their supplies, you know, maybe even you know, a cart with their supplies on it or a closet or a storage area, but there are no walls for posters. So for these kinds of work sites, First, I would consider if there's any way to communicate the postings to each person electronically, like the solutions that we just talked about. But if the employees are not working with computers or mobile devices, or if they're not provided with Internet access as part of their jobs, you need to consider other options. Um, one that works pretty well that I recommend is a binder option, um, a binder format, where all the required postings are kept in a compact um, sort of a binder format. Um, it's something that you could either you know, hang on a hook if it's got you know, rings, or you could place it on a desk, on a desktop. Um, you would just need to make sure that you keep them updated, of course, whenever there are mandatory changes. And again, that you make them accessible and as visible as possible to your employees. Make sure they know that they're there and you know, how to access and use them or read them. Um, and just to reiterate, these finders, cannot be used as a substitute for the regular wall postings if your facility has walls. The Department of Labor has been pretty clear on that. They actually published something on this. But they are compliant for non-traditional settings without any walls to hang posters. The next question is, what if we have employees who work at a client's work site? Who is responsible for the posters? And this is another one, um, when I talked, said earlier we're going to get into some advanced um, topics around posted compliance. This is another one that gets really legal and tricky, and it depends on a lot of factors. Um, it really depends on the laws of your jurisdiction, uh, where you're operating. Also, it depends on your legal relationship with the client or the third party where your employees are working, um, and the nature of the work being performed and those employees' relationships with um, the two companies, who's supervising, who's managing the work, that kind of thing, but also who's paying the employees. So there are a lot of factors that play in. But the general answer is that it is still your responsibility to make sure the employees have access to all the right posters on the walls. Um, and this is the, the theory of joint employer liability. And under joint employer liability, the responsibility for employment law compliance typically falls on both you and the client. But in reality, uh, we all know this, that it's hard, um, it would be hard to monitor what your client is doing or what that third party is doing in terms of posting compliance and whether their posters are complete and up to date and compliant. So that's why it's best just to take charge and do it yourself um, because of the joint employer liability. Um, if you're in a situation where you have control over the workspace, if you can, you should go ahead and make sure the posters are up on the walls in the areas where your employees work. If not, consider um, some of the other solutions that we talked about today, like the binder format, the binder solution. 
um, and maybe even supplement it with an electronic solution if they work on um, computers. You know, the, um, the electronic solution that either pushes them out individually to each employee by email or some kind of um, intranet link um, that you provide to, for your employees to access um, you know, anytime, anywhere, 24-7. Um, it's also a good idea to include in your contracts with your clients or these um, third parties that they are obligated to comply with all employee posting requirements. Most contracts have that in there, that they're um, responsible for complying with employment laws. Specify employee posting requirements. Um, because the posters do need to be posted on the wall. Um, this doesn't get, get anyone out of that. They, they do need to be up. But again, it's technically your responsibility. So I wouldn't just rely on that, even if it's in your contract. It's a good idea to have it in the contract, but still, it's up to you to make sure it's right. Because um, you know, technically, they're your employees. Okay, next question. When are we obligated to post in Spanish or other foreign languages? So this depends. Um, some of the posters have to be posted in Spanish and other foreign languages no matter what, even if all of your employees are proficient in English. And this is the case in 22 states right now, um, 22 states and Washington, D.C., where certain posters in those states have to be posted in Spanish by all employers no matter what. And then a lot of city and county posters have this same type of requirement. They have to be posted in Spanish or actually in multiple languages on the city county level. Um, and again, this can apply even if all of your employees are proficient in English and the languages on the posters are not even spoken at that location. So this slide lists the states um, that I'm talking about where certain posters have to be posted in Spanish even if you have no Spanish-speaking employees. And again, just to clarify, I'm not saying that all posters in these states have to be posted in English and Spanish. It's just some of the posters in each of these states. It may only be one or two posters in some of these states, um, and the rest can still be in English. Um, so by the way, if you are a Poster Guard customer, you don't need to worry about these requirements. Um, we already include all of these Spanish posters for these states in our regular English service. If they're required for all employers, no matter what, we include them. So you don't even need to research it or ask for it, uh, whether it's Spanish or any other mandatory language, um, any other mandatory um, language requirement, it's covered. The same goes for city and county posters. If they must be posted by everyone, by every employer in a foreign language, regardless of whether that language is spoken at your location, um, we'll go ahead and include those for you um, in the required languages. You don't have to ask for that. Now, if you do have locations with Spanish-speaking employees, there are some additional posting requirements that you need to know about. So first of all, we'll talk um, federal. When it comes to the federal postings, if you have a significant number of Spanish-speaking employees who are not proficient in English, that's the legal standard, you need to post the federal combination poster in both English and Spanish. And that's because of the FMLA um, posting. It's required by law for that poster. On a state level, there is not a requirement written into law that says you have to post every poster in both English and Spanish, even if you do employ a lot of Spanish-speaking employees who aren't proficient in English. But while it's not required by law, most employers who have to post the bilingual federal poster, because they do have a significant number of Spanish-speaking employees, um, in that case, most employers choose to go ahead and post all of the state postings in both languages as well. Um, again, just because it's a best practice. It would just be difficult to explain in any kind of dispute why there was a choice made that you know, certain posters were posted in Spanish, but we didn't take the extra step to post all of the mandatory notices in the languages that we know our employees you know, would understand. So it's just a best practice that's recommended. It is not mandatory. Um, so there is one exception on a, a state level. In Pennsylvania, employers who employ any Spanish-speaking employees do have to post all of the state posters in English and Spanish. And unfortunately, the agency doesn't provide a clear definition or legal standard of who this applies to or whether it even needs to be a significant number of employees that are affected. It simply says it applies to all employers with Spanish-speaking employees in Pennsylvania. 
So to be safe, if you have Spanish-speaking employees and you're located in Pennsylvania, you should be posting all of the Pennsylvania state posters in both English and Spanish. Okay, the next question is, we are a federal contractor. Do the federal contractor posters have to be posted at every work site? So um, just to a uh, high-level overview here in case you're not aware, there are additional labor law posters that federal contractors have to post. And this is on top of all the federal, state, and city posters we've already um, covered today. There are actually up to, I think, 14 additional posters that could apply. Um, but some of them only have to be posted if you have certain kinds of contracts, um, you know, depending who you contract with or um, funding. And um, also some of them only apply if you meet certain contract amounts or, you know, sales funding or contracts have to meet a certain um, dollar amount. So some of these have to be posted by all federal contractors, and then some depend on your specific contracts. Um, we actually have uh, a great white paper that goes through each of the postings and who they apply to. I've done entire one-hour webinars just on this one topic, so there's a lot here. Um, but if you'd like us to send you the white paper, just ask for it using the chat feature, and we'll um, be happy to email it to you. It goes through each poster and how, how you can determine if that poster applies to you if you have to post it. But this question is about whether you have to post these federal contractor posters at all locations. So let's say you are a covered federal contractor and these posters apply to you. Do you have to post them at all your locations um, with all your regular labor law posters? And the answer is, um, for most of the federal contractor posters, you only have to post them where federal contract work is actually being performed. So only at those locations or even in those areas of a building. But just be aware, this is interpreted pretty broadly. So it does include um, areas just related to the contract work. So, you know, things like, you know, even your support functions, like uh, really any area of your business that supports the federal contract work. So think of human resources, payroll, accounting, um, sometimes inventory or inventory management, um, contract procurement could apply, or really any other part of your business if it's involved in the federal contract work or if the work depends on that business unit. Okay, um, we have one more question to cover, and that is what are the posting requirements for job applicants if we only accept applications online? So first of all, just to back up a little, there are certain posters that you have to physically post in your applicant areas. And this is an area of compliance that a lot of people are just not that familiar with, and it's really important because with an auditor or an inspection officer that comes in, they really don't have to go that far to see if you're in compliance. Um, so a lot of employers don't realize this, but just on a federal level, out of the six mandatory federal postings that we went over um, at the beginning, four of those have to be displayed in areas where applicants and employees can view them. Uh, those are the EEOC, FMLA, USERA, and EPPA postings. Also, if you participate in E-Verify, you also need to post the E-Verify and the Right to Work posters where applicants can see them. Those two, by the way, have to be in English and Spanish no matter what. So if you accept applications online, you do need to provide a link to the mandatory applicant-facing posters. So wherever you're accepting job applications online, you need to provide a link so that your applicants can um, view the poster images. That is required. Um, however, if you also take applications in person or if you have applicants coming in for pre-employment testing or for interviews or for any other purpose, you would also need to have the posters displayed at your facility where the applicants can see them. So um, at this point, there's no definitive guideline saying that that link uh, for online applicants can be a substitute for the physical wall postings. Um, just like what we talked about before, it applies even for your applicant postings. Okay, well that wraps it up. Um, I hope you found this presentation to be helpful and informative. I know we went over a lot of legal requirements and details, but um, hopefully we've answered a lot of your questions and you're walking away feeling a little more confident about posting compliance and um, your specific obligations. So hopefully you have some um, takeaway action items. If you have any questions or would like additional information about Poster Guard or any of the posting compliance issues that I've touched on today. Please feel free to contact our compliance specialist, Peter Frey, 
at 954-970-5702. Or you can reach Peter by email at pfray, P-F-R-A-Y, at hrdirect.com. Thanks again for attending today's presentation, and we hope you have a wonderful afternoon.